Good morning, everyone. So happy I could get this boy out for a walk. He had a long day yesterday. Both of the kitties did. Actually, Vanna sleeps most of the time. She doesn't really mind the drive as much as this boy. But he's been looking out the window at this new environment and been wanting to get outside. But we're kind of in a transitional environment. We're kind of in the desert. And so you can see definitely the floor is a lot different. It's a lot more sparse. It's a lot more dry. But we didn't, we got in late last night from the long drive and we didn't have a chance to show you this place. But we're kind of parked in this little subdivision right here. And you can see here at the houses, at some of the basic houses that have been built on these lots, that one's made of brick. You can see that one's kind of made of sticks. It looks like it might be a Waddle and Dobb someday in the future. And then to the right of that, it's the Adobe bricks. But in any event, there's a tin structure over there. I'll show you some of these hot dwellings up closer up, but I always enjoy looking at the different uh, dwellings and how they're built and how they're constructed. It's so fa fascinating to me. But then as I look up on these mountains up here, I see these roads coming down. And if you see the roads, it looks like they come down at a constant slope, like maybe 20 degrees or 15 degrees or something, and they're perfectly straight. But once you get up there, from here they look fine, but once you get up there and see how windy they are, they actually turn to be two or three times long, maybe even four times longer than they look from up here. But if you look back there behind the van, you'll see a couple roads going up. That's our, that's our direction we're headed today. So we've got a couple hours to go to the city. We need fuel, we need water, and we need food. So we're hoping we can supply up in this next town that's a little better. If not, we've got about a five hour drive from here to the next town, Caja America where we think is a pretty big city and we'll be able to supply up there. All right, whenever G gets a walk, this one's at the door yelping for her turn and today was no different. She's ready to get out and explore this new environment too. She usually gets satisfied in five or 10 minutes, G could stay out here forever. The snow is driving. We got a big drive day today. Most importantly, we need supplies. <laughs> yeah, we got to get to a real store. All right, if you see those definitive stripes up the mountain, that is our road. That is our trail today. As I discussed earlier, they look like straight, easy roads. But once we get up there, we will show you that's not the case. So if you missed the last episode, one of the biggest challenges we had yesterday in the long, long drive through these mountains is these roads are narrow. And a lot of places they're one lane wide with two way traffic, blind corners that you can't see. And a lot of times you're coming through areas like this where there's a cave, like there's a wall on both sides. So there's no way two cars can fit through there. Every once in a while you get a pull off. So we're gonna be constantly watching ahead to see if we can see some cars. I see a motorcycle going up the hill and a car going up the hill, but definitely something that makes these some of the scariest roads we've driven on. The fog is setting in. We had some discussions in our last episode whether that's a good thing or a bad thing because you can't see the impending danger that hangs off the edge of the cliff. However, we can't see it now, so you look into the abyss. It's still but scary. It's still scary, and we know it's down there because we saw it before we got up here. So anyway, we're just going to ease along here. Not going to bore you guys with all this stuff, but it's nail biting. So we've reached the town of Saladin, and the moto taxis and tuk-tuks are still here, as are the earthen structures. But we finally have cell phone service after about three days. 
And there are some fuel stations here, so we know that, so we're excited about that. And diesel is 1820 souls per gallon. We made it. We found water. This town has potable water. So here we go. Gonna fill up our tank. We are full of fuel. We are full of water, which is really good. We're good. Uh, this town seems to not have uh, the type of grocery store we need to stock up on things like cat food and litter and some things you just can't get at the little small stores. So we are heading on to the next town, which we think is a big city. Caja America. Cross your fingers, or the cats are gonna be eating our food. That won't be good. <laughs> <laughs> In a past video, I told y'all that there's gonna be some sections of Peru where we're just driving. Uh, there are so many amazing and cool things to see in Peru, but sometimes there's just two or three days of driving between destinations. Peru is bigger than you might would think. It's long. Uh, and right now we're in one of those driving sections. We have made it successfully back to the main road. And at least for right now, it is a two lane road with an actual stripe down the middle. We hope the road stays a little bit better as we get closer to this next bigger city. Y'all cross your fingers. We're ready for normal roads, aren't we? Yeah, no more road drama for us. We've had quite enough. I'm sure you guys had enough. We have definitely had more than yes, enough. Yes. We are about an hour and 15 minutes from Caja America and we've entered a new terrain. It's gotten grassier. There's more livestock for sure. And then there's all these rocks just scattered across the grass fields. There's donkeys and pigs and cows and little towns scattered throughout. And we still have two full lanes. We have come to an area where all the houses, no matter how humble, how small, have these tiny blue buildings next to them that have a water tank and a solar hot water heater. And we've passed like 30 of them already. They're all painted exactly the same. They're some sort of a kit. And we've never seen anything like it. It's this little bathroom kit that people pop up right next to their house. We just went through the little city of Encanada and it's the first city in a while since probably the one where we tried to supply up the first time up by Gokta where there's activity. Yeah. There was a little town square, people are out, there's little market stands, there was a juice stand, uh, the church and the town square were done up real nice. There's just a lot of activity in this little town. Things seem to be coming to life around here. A bit more of indigenous culture here. They wear these big, tall, white hats, which is pretty cool, so. Should Kurt, should Kurt get a big, tall, white hat? <laughs> We've made it to the outskirts of the city, but our plan is, first we need to find a place to camp. And there's a place that looks pretty nice just outside of town. We're gonna ride by there, see if that place is gonna work out or not before we head actually into the city to get all the supplies. Because if this place won't work out, then we'll have to go to a backup plan in the city. Fingers crossed this place works out, it's still open, because the reviews look really nice, and we need to hunker down for a day or two and edit a couple of videos for you. So that is the plan. Oh, Kurt just hit it upside down Tope. Tope is a speed bump. <laughs> And I'll go ahead and tell y'all, even though we didn't video it about 30 minutes ago, Kurt hit one going about 45 miles an hour. Going oh, wherever we were going, neither of <laughs> yeah. us saw it. No, nope. nailed it. And that's always scary because that could really damage the van, but it did not. We're in good shape. Headed out to a possible camp. Okay. 30 solids per night. We park back here. The bathrooms and showers are nice, but they're back here. Okay. We have Wi-Fi everywhere, but I doubt it's going to reach out there where he's going to have us park. Okay. So we'll see. We're going to park now or going to the We're grocery store? We're going to go store? to the grocery store. Okay. So we'll go up here, turn around, and come back out. All right. 
our camp we're at here in Caja America as neighbors. We have some fellow travelers here with us and we've decided to have a community dinner. So let's get to it. That was an incredibly yummy, yummy ramen meal. The company was even better. What's cool is both of these other couples are both from Oregon. So that's kind of cool. And these guys over here, Jesse and Catherine have a brand new four month old baby. They've been on the road for about two and a half years. And behind us, Eric and Yuko, They've been on the road one month longer than us. So we all had some good stories to share. Sometimes it's nice, isn't it, Kurt? It was a real fun time hanging out with them. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's been a long time since we had a group of van lifers yeah. together, so. Yeah. Thanks for the invite, guys. Yeah, so now. And look at this sunset. Ooh. Oh, wow. Everyone look at the sunset. That's pretty. Huh. All right, we're headed back into our van because it's a work day. All right, what started off as a little stop to get some work done and refresh turned into a whole different deal. We ended up meeting some new van friends and that was pretty cool. We got to hang out with them and that was nice. And then I got super sick. And it's a uh, stomach bug. A stomach bug and I zapped all my energy I was I was really sick for a day and a half two days guys but in any event we're restocked we're refull I'm feeling better snows at the wheel we're pulling out of this town Caja America and we are ready to go Can and I tell them where we're going and we are headed to a really cool place tell them snow the only hint you're gonna get is it's the beach and it has a really cool Thing that happens at the specific beach we're going to. So did I mention that we're going today down from about 11,000 feet above sea level to sea level? And so that means the trip from Caja America after we climbed a short up is mostly switchbacks downhill. So we're probably about halfway down, a lot more switchbacks to go. What's funny is you can see the road two miles off and it's down about 2,000 feet. So anyway, more beautiful, stunning views. We've showed you a lot, not gonna show you a lot today, but I just wanted to share with you that we're going down. All right, we've crossed into another area, another zone, guys. And here, you can see where the mountain, where all this sand and silt and dirt has been washed away and all you see are these big giant boulders. It reminds me of the southern U.S. down in Joshua Park, Joshua Tree. But in any event, you can actually see the skeleton of the mountains. There's no dirt, there's no roots, there's no grass, just rocks. And then as we look off into the left, off into the distance, we're starting to see what looks like giant sand dunes. So on the mountain, you see this giant ridge where it looks like the wind has pushed up the sand. So I'm not so sure if we're not gonna be heading into a legit desert real soon. 
All right, we just had a new warning light pop up. You see the one to the left there, that's the windshield wipers. We keep that full, but the light's stuck on. But the other one to the right just warned us that our brake pads are too low. Those darn Andes mountains. So all this up and down through the mountains, I guess we've burned up our brakes. And now we've got to come up with the plan B on what we're gonna do. After this visit to the coast, we were scheduled to head back inland. There's uh, some cool mountains with some glaciers and pretty lakes we were going to go up and hike. But now we have to change our plans because we can't go into the mountains, need work done on our van, especially our brakes. We're going to head to Lima where there's a Mercedes dealership and get our van checked out. That was the plan all along to get it serviced there, but it just made it bump up with a little more urgency. So things are changing, things are changing, but we're still headed to the beach right now where we will regroup. So as we get closer and closer to the beach, we're getting more and more into a deserty area. I'm not somebody real experienced in deserts, but I've always kind of associated wind with deserts. And it's very windy here. I am two hands on the wheel, holding on, getting a workout. It is windy through this stretch, guys, especially in our big tall van. We've made it to our beach destination. I'm gonna tell you the really cool famous fact about this place in a few minutes. But right now, we're working on finding a place to camp. So Kurt, of course, has gone inside to work his magic. So the van is parked right here behind us and we're hoping to be able to use the facilities of one of these hostels and park right here on the road next to it. That's the plan. But here's a little hint about where we're at. There's a surfer, and there's a lot of them here. And it'll be really cool when I tell y'all why. But I'm gonna wait until Kurt's here. And look here, we got here just in time to set up for a sunset. Another thing that is absolutely shocking, it is cold here. Like, I need pants and a jacket on. I was all ready for bathing suit weather, but not right now. It is winter time down here, but I thought we were close enough to the equator that it would be warm. Look at all the kitty cats. <laughs> this is their safe spot, apparently. Oh. <laughs> so we're settled into our camp. We're taking a short walk around. We did not, I've already told y'all, we did not expect it to be this cold, but we're checking out the block or two right around us. We found a nice lady named Doris with a hostel. We're gonna get to use the facilities with a great view. Right on the beach in front of the biggest wave not in the, the biggest, whole world. The, the longest. longest. This is the home of the longest wave in the world. Surfers come from all over the world to surf this. We're at prime time. It only rolls in a couple of times a week though. We're gonna try to catch it for you guys. Now, let me tell you the cool story. In Northern Peru on the sandy desert coast sits one of the world's most treasured waves, the longest wave in the world. This wave was discovered by chance by a surfer named Chuck Shipman in the mid 1960s. Chuck was flying home to Hawaii after competing in a surf competition in Peru. He saw the wave out of the plane window. It was a long, long, long left breaking wave. And when he searched the map, the closest landmark he could find was a bay named Chikama, which is now the name of this longest wave. When he arrived home in Hawaii, he immediately called his surfer friends back in Peru, and the search for the exact location of this long wave began. Since the wave was literally in the middle of a desert with no roads at the time, it took a couple of years to locate the wave that Chuck had spotted from the plane. But finally, a surfer named Carlos Bereda found the wave at Puerto Malabrigo. But by this time, due to the legend of the sighting back in the 1960s, the wave was already known as Chikama. The actual length of the wave varies by time of year, currents, and the weather. 
Between May and August, you stand the best chance for a truly epic wave, up to two and a half miles, or four kilometers, although waves of that length only roll in once or twice a week. But the wave breaks evenly all year long with multiple takeoff points, so there is always good surf here. There is a strong current that will pull you away from the starting point, and the distance back to the break can be quite long. So you either get out and walk along the beach, or there are always going to be Zodiac boats waiting to shuttle the surfers back to the start, where they can try for an epic ride once again. Well, this looked like a perfect place to pull out our bikes. Take a little stroll around this town and see what we can find. It is a beautiful sunny day. And we hear that the wave will get a bit bigger this afternoon. So let's go see what we can find. All right, here we go. Riding our bike around this fun little let's surf town. <laughs> I remember when my mother told me the best things they don't come easy. I had no idea how real that was. She said, don't stop dreaming. You got to keep believing it will all be worth it one day. Oh, 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 oh. I can't believe I made it. I can't believe I made it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, 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 I can't believe I made it. I can't believe I made it. And I'm on my way. coming in big that's where the wave starts the surfers go there and they surf one long continuous wave all the way we're still going still going all the way to that fishing pier in the distance now we met a local this morning and he told us that there is a surfer from Hawaii that has it's been recorded he rode this for five kilometers. Now we don't know, it's just what locals told us. We don't know the surfer's name, but uh, that's a long way to surf a wave. Time for a little lunch. And we hear that we can get Venezuelan arepas here. Now, if you talk to a Colombian or a Venezuelan, they're both gonna tell you that their country has the best arepas. Now we've had Colombian arepas. Let's see what these are like. Oh, and there's a kitty. <laughs> We're at Burgers and Brownies. Kurt's scoping out that menu. They have arepas. Now, if you guys have been following along in Colombia, we had some amazing arepas that we loved a lot. We met the folks who owned this last night and they were saying these are Venezuelan arepas and much better game on. It snows eyeball in the menu, but you guys know what she ordered for drinks. Pina. Yeah. <laughs> and I've already committed to an arepa. She's eyeballing the menu to see what she's going to get. Any lean yet, Snow, or are you no, still deciding? Still deciding. 
She, while well, she's deciding, take a look at this beautiful view. And right down the stairs and around the corner is where the van is. So we're right off of this Malikon. Snow got her heart of Pina. I like Pina. She's a Pina head. Me too. Look at that creamy. I love when it's creamy Pina. I got an arepa. This is pork, but it looks like it's a burger with a fried egg. It looks like avocado, tomato. This is a Venezuelan arepa. You can see I got papas, ketchup, and mustard. So I got a pork burger. Got some tomatoes, onions, avocado, cheese. Looks tasty. All right, poppy seed bun. Here we go. Open up wide. Oh, that's good bread, too. Good bread. All right, we're going to eat. So the question is, is this arepa as good as Colombia's? Mm. What's the verdict? Ecuador didn't have arepas. I miss arepas. How is it compared to Colombia? Colombia's or mejor? But it's good. It looks good. It's dripping egg juice, and you like that. Yeah. All right, as we were leaving Ecuador, we were realizing how cold it actually is. And the further we go south, it's probably only going to get colder. So anyway, they have some little uh, like sweaters out here. I think Snow wants to try some on. Okay. Oh, you like that one right there in her arm. Cuanto cuesta? Barato. 120. 120. 120 soles now. Just so you guys know, 100 soles is about $25. So this is about a $30 sweater. Economico. Muchas gracias. But aquí.
How was the ride? This is my favorite beach to date. And we almost didn't even come here because it's quite out of the way. But that sunset, the dunes, the desert, the way is, and the town, the people are even kind. Favorite beach to date. It is time to leave this amazing little beach that we found that I am, for now, calling my favorite big beach on the trip to date. But uh, we wanted to stay an extra day and try to capture the wave doing its long effect. I think you can see how it could do it all the way from the little island over here to the fishing pier. But it only rolls in like twice a week, so we have missed it. We did our best to show it to you. But there is an issue here in Peru that means we need to leave here and get to a little bit more secure location. Uh, tomorrow, all the truckers in the country are going to go on strike. Um, they're striking against fuel prices and it may have an effect on the country and being able to move about and get supplies depending on how long it lasts. So we thought it was wise to head to a grocery store, stock up. We found another beach camp that is in a gated place where it'll be a little bit more secure. We don't truly expect anything bad to happen. Maybe just a protest for a day or two, but better safe than sorry. So we will see you guys in a few days from a gated campsite, but still on the beach. Cheers. And we're going to do some cool stuff while we're there. Yeah, we are. Yeah, so we'll see you in a few days. See you guys. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.